So welcome to Council of Geeks. Uh, we threw this one together as quickly as we were comfortable doing because a whole mess of Spider-Man kind of just happened all over the internet. So I'm kind of glad we're actually doing this a few days after the initial announcement because it, it's allowed uh, d the dust to settle a little bit and some things to get confirmed because the initial announcement of Marvel getting to use Spider-Man. I know! What? If you left it at just that sentence, most fans would be ecstatic. But there's a little bit more to the case than that. There is more to the case than that because Sony still has it right. and Sony is still making their own movie. Right. Although, they have brought Kevin Feige on board to produce, which is uh, at least a sense that they, that they seem to understand that they don't know what they're doing with Spider-Man. And they're going, please, you guys who know what you're doing, give us a hand. We'll let you use him. Just give us a hand. Yeah. What's still unknown as far as the solo Spider-Man movie, which is coming out in 2017, how much input will they have into the creative side? The casting the hiring of the scriptwriter, the hiring of the director. Probably in very broad story strokes and probably in casting. Right. That might be about it, but they've got to have at least that because even though Sony has their solo movie, he's going to appear in a Marvel Cinematic Universe film first. Right. right. Chances are. Now, which brings us to how will he be used? Everyone seems to, at this point, be assuming that it's going to be Civil War. That's the most logical place to introduce him. He was a very crucial part of the of the source material of the Civil War comic. The movie is not going to be like that comic, and I can't imagine his role being anything like that. No, well, it can't be, because let's not forget, they're not making Civil War. They're making Captain America right. Civil War. Right. So it's never going to be Spider-Man focused. Right. And the other thing about inserting him into Civil War is that why he was important to that story, sort of what he represented, right. doesn't exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which right. is the secret identity thing. Because right. it was such a big deal that he sided with registration and revealed his identity. Right. But the Marvel Cinematic Universe, nobody's got a secret identity. Right. All these people are known. And they're also far enough along on Civil War. It's going to start filming in two months, maybe? I think yeah. April is when they start to film. At it. most, they're going to be able to tack him on. They, they don't, even if they wanted to, they don't have time to restructure that whole movie to integrate him more heavily. And there are other possibilities, because that's not the only Marvel Cinematic Universe movie nope. coming out um, that they would have time to get him into. Right. It, has to be, it has to be one of five movies before his movie is scheduled to come out in July of 2017. There are five movies before that. Well, some of those are basically already shot. The post, the final post credit sequence oh. with the Avengers in the Schwarmer restaurant was filmed the day of the Hollywood premiere, two days before that movie came out okay. in, in mainstream cinema. Okay, so maybe they can give him a post credit stinger. I don't think okay. that would happen, but maybe. it also wouldn't surprise me if that did happen. Okay. The movie's still three months out. They could do it. So that's a possibility. Um, Here's one not too many people are talking about, Doctor Strange. Those two are a great team up because of how different they are. Um, they're always fun to see in a team up. I can't see that Spider-Man showing up in Doctor Strange's first film, where we need to introduce this character and sell him on his own merits. I, just, I can't see, Spider-Man would be a distraction. Yeah. And I don't think, in a sequel, possibly. Here's an idea that I don't think is gonna happen. All of the Marvel Netflix shows are set in New York. Yep. Spider-Man's a New York hero. Yep. I think it would be awesome to either introduce or integrate him into those Netflix shows, or at least failing that, at least build him as a reference point. Because you can't tell me he's going on in the same city as these other people and they don't know who he is. Yeah. I don't think it'll happen in Daredevil because but Daredevil the Dare comes out. Daredevil's already shot. Right. Daredevil's that's, a, that's done. That's two months away. I, that doesn't happen. Also, I don't. I think that would be more of a distraction. Again, it's he is the type of character who just by his nature, he's going to suck some of the oxygen out of the room when he's on screen. A little bit. And I don't think you want to detract away from the characters. He could show up in AKA Jessica Jones because she is a character who, if done right, is sort of the almost normal person. She does have superheroes, but she's almost the normal in the world of the gods. Her, her talking to Spider-Man would be an interesting situation. I could see that. 
But it also might just generate buzz for the show. Depending on how quickly they get casting done, if they get someone who's not a huge name, they can put in the contract appearances in the Netflix show, which, you know, that sort of contract and money is the reason that we're not going to see right. Tony Stark or right. even Hawkeye show up in the Netflix show, even though it's all in the same right. world. One of the movies that we haven't talked about is Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and we're assuming that Spider-Man is yeah, probably not going to appear in that. Don't think so. It does... I did hear something. There was the interesting idea, though, of the Venom symbiote is an alien thing. This That's... does open the door that Venom could be introduced, whether or not it's the Venom that we associate, that the, the sort of same image, but that alien quality, that symbiote could potentially show up in a Marvel Studios project. And Guardians That's of the Galaxy is the one where it could. Yeah. Oh, hadn't even thought of that one. Uh, Andrew Garfield is out. That's confirmed. That is. And the word is, and this seems pretty reliable, that they're looking at young, like legitimately young. Not another 30-year-old to play teen, but a legitimate teen. Right. Which bums me out slightly because the only version of Peter Parker we've gotten up to this point has been the teenage version. Mm -hmm. And I, we've had that five movies now. I, he got out of high school in the first Spider-Man. Yes, he was but, a then college he's, student. but then yeah, he's in he's college. Been... And then the third one, I know technically he was an adult, but all the drama, it was still teenage drama. Right. So I still consider that to be the teenage version of Spider-Man. Right. We haven't gotten adult spider which is actually my preferred Spider-Man. The guy who has a more or less stable home life, right. and who, but who goes out and does this thing, because that tends to be the... Um, the, the less melodramatic Spider-Man, the more witty, more banter, more sarcastic Spider-Man, which is my preferred version. Right. It's, it sounds like Marvel was really unhappy that every Spider-Man movie was so focused on the romance angle and that they were pretty much love stories that happen to have a superhero. What if we focus on this element of what if he's in the middle of class and he hears the <laughs> rhino terrorizing downtown? Like do like the Clark Kent thing where he's gonna pretend <laughs> like he's gotta throw up and then he has to climb out the bathroom window to go swing downtown and fight crime and get back before he's tardy or something. So uh, okay, there's a validity to that. And and I guess the one other thing is it, it does appear we are getting Peter Parker again. They Peter Parker was named in in the official announcement. So yeah. the fans of Miles Morales I think they're still going to have to wait 70-something years. And, um, well, it's a shame because it would have been the fastest, easiest way to break from all the other stuff that's been uh, done up to this point. Right. We might never see him out of costume until the Spider-Man movie in 2017. Mm. They could cast a dancer in the... Well, certainly... And do they, something with the voice acting in... Certainly if they tack something on as a... As a post-credits. As a post-credits really fast to something like Age of Ultron or... The, yeah, they'd probably have to. Why do you think Marvel has done this now? Why do you think there was such a, a focus to get this done? At this point, Sony was in a weak enough position in regards to Spider-Man that they would have been prepared to make a deal, which obviously they did. Marvel doesn't need Spider-Man. Marvel is doing just fine on their own without Spider-Man, but... If they just waited for Sony to continue to screw it up until they gave up and just let the rights lapse, then what Marvel gets back is a damaged property. Mm -hmm. And I think they made the decision that they are better off getting to borrow a property that gets buoyed and gets put into a better position than wait a few years and get to own wholly a damaged property that isn't worth what it used to be. I agree that Marvel doesn't need Spider-Man right now because right now they have iron man captain america and thor and i don't know for how much longer they have them because contracts are going to be up and i don't know if they're going to want to recast right away and replace them spider-man does give them some safety net in that in that people will say okay i don't know if i would watch the avengers starring black panther and ant-man but if you throw spider-man in the mix everything just got kind of moved back a couple of months yeah, pretty much. I mean, Thor Ragnarok was originally supposed to come out in July. It's now going to come out in November. Yeah. Uh, and Thor The Dark World came out in November. So that's not a big change for that. But now Black Panther doesn't get his solo movie until after the first part of Infinity War. Unless there's a second Spider-Man movie. And there's already speculation that the sequel to the next Spider-Man movie might be scheduled for 2019. Because Marvel's going to want a quicker turnaround. Yeah, and that, and that's... That's something that hadn't even occurred to me, the sequel. Now, you know, different people are reading different amounts into this. I think we've sort of had this discussion before we started the camera rolling, that you're, you're reading 
into it a little bit more than I am. Because I, I, I see this as, while uh, as a fan, it annoys me. Mm -hmm. Looking at it from a strictly business standpoint, I think it really just came down to them looking at the schedule going, well, we gotta put it somewhere. And they couldn't wedge it in between two movies that they already have planned because then it's bumping up against them. Yeah. And, or, or it just puts it in, in like a dead zone, you don't release movies in, at, right. at that time. So I, th I think it was just a matter of where do we put this where it will still succeed and it's not gonna cannibalize other stuff. And ultimately that was why everything got shifted up and bumped. I think it was a completely business driven decision, not a we think Spider Man is more important. And I and I get it. and I, I kind of come down a little bit from that. It still leaves a bad taste in my mouth because they were willing to stare down Warner Brothers and put their Captain America threequel against the first ever on screen team up of Superman and Batman. And they made Warner Brothers blink. I just wish they could have said, Sony, you change your release for this movie. If Marvel just left it up to Sony and Sony put it in a position where Marvel is somehow competing with it, right. that means that either their movies get hurt because Spider-Man does better, right. or that brand gets hurt because their movies do better. Right. I don't, they were gonna try and spin gold out of hay by, make, by creating a universe with and, Sinister Six Venom, and I'm just gonna call them Spider-Gals. And are they still going to try and do that? So far as we know, yes. Technically, none of this stuff has been canceled. Right. Which means it could all still feasibly happen. Specifically in the case of the Sinister Six movie is a really bad idea because that one specifically was designed to be coming off of Amazing Spider-Man 2, which whether or not they're going to do any kind of real reboot and say that doesn't count anymore or whether they're just going to try and not talk about it. Yeah. You don't want to be tying back to that thing either way. Right. The Venom movie could probably still work as well as a Venom solo movie. Can be made to work. At, it, at least so far as that does not automatically tie back to the continuity that they're now trying to distance themselves from. The Sinister Six movie, though, does. If you told me that the Sinister Six are going to be the villains in the new Spider-Man movie... I'm pumped. That's aces. <laughs> if you still want to make the Sinister Six the protagonists of a movie, I still haven't decided if I'm going to see Suicide Squad. And I would see that a thousand times before I saw the Sinister Six. Oh, that's the other thing with the Sinister Six movie. Suicide Squad's going to be out before that, no matter how quickly they get stuff pulled together. Right. There was a lot that happened around Spider-Man. But you, you know what? Even though you know, we've expressed our reservations are concerned, uh, for the first time in a while, I am genuinely interested and what goes on with Spider-Man in the movies again. I want to see the next Spider-Man movie now. And last year I didn't. If he does show up in Captain America Civil War, like I said, I think that starts filming in April. Yeah. So we'll know when they start casting, we'll probably have an idea of how big a part he can have. And yeah. it, it might be something like Qu Quicksilver's part in X-Men Days, Days of, of Future, Future Past. Past which was a scene-stealing 10-minute part. The first movie that Spider-Man shows up in, I don't want to know going into the theater that he's going to be there. I want him to swing to the scene, and I didn't know it was going to come, and I just go, oh, yes! That, that, that is my dream. That would be cool. Here's hoping. Yes, because hope. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so thank you very much, Ryan, for joining me, and thank you for joining Council of Geeks. So until next time, this council is adjourned.